Okay. Well, hello and welcome. My name is Livia Kohn, and I'm here today to introduce my latest book. It's called Taming Time, How Taoists Work with Multiple Temporalities. And the book is one of a series of books on the subject of time in relation to the Taoist religion. And it's the second volume that's coming out in the series. The first volume appeared in January. And it was entitled Now in Time Classical Philosophy. And it was an edited volume that had 11 presentations by both um, senior and junior scholars from various different countries on the subject of time and how it was expressed in post philosophy. And then we have another volume coming out in the fall, which is called Time and Taoist Practice, which has 13 contributions, a mixture of practitioners and scholars that talk about how Taoists um, use time in their cultivation and how they calculate time um, in order to um, get the right timing for their various activities. And that'll be out in the fall. And then uh, probably January, we have another volume it is time in comparative perspective, Taoist visions of time in comparative perspective, more philosophical, but also more comparative. And we have comparisons with ancient Greece, with Japanese Zen, with modern Jungian philosophy, with Western, different Western thinkers, both ancient and modern. And so that is another exciting volume. Now my own self-authored book, Taming Time, which is just about to come out. Um, it, the publication date is in two weeks. It's now available on our website, threepintspress.com, at a reduced pre-publication purchase price. Um, the book is 330 pages. Um, it has, it follows the lead of the big scholar of time, Julius T. Fraser. And he came up with something he calls major temporal modes or temporalities. And there are six of those. And they follow the outline, the development, the unfolding of the universe. And so when the universe first started or before the universe started in cosmic chaos, there was no time at all, which he calls a temporality also described as timelessness, which in Taoism comes out as like cosmic chaos hundun, and also the ultimate state of like mystical union with Tao. And then the second major temporality in Fraser's system is called proto-temporality, which is the early stages of the universe, which we connect with quantum physics, where particles are waves and waves are particles. And it's essentially synchronistic, synchronous, synchronous of synchronicity and um, non-local so time and space are completely flexible and in this level of physics time can move in all different directions it is not a flow in a singular direction and those connect to this through fortune telling through the aging and through time travel where you have stories where people go into an immortal's grotto and they hang out with the immortals for like a week then they come back and like seven generations have passed um, the third level is eo temporality which is the time of the stars and the planets um, it's very regular it's causal um, it is strictly organized it's measurable it doesn't necessarily go in one direction, but it does flow very, it's very repetitive and very um, relatively predictable. And also, of course, um, have a lot to do with the stars. Um, they reorganize their practice and their rituals based on um, the star, the sun and the moon and different phases of the day. And so we do have a close connection to the stars and also the earth. So there's a certain amount of feng shui that comes into the star dimension of time. Now, from here, we move on to biotemporality, which is the time of living organisms. And in the Taoist system, it divides into two parts. There's especially the circadian rhythm, where Taoists work with time according to the rising and setting of the sun, and certain organs that have um, energy is dominant at certain times of day. 
And then there's also, and then there's lunar cycles, the months and annual cycles was the seasons that are Taoist, very, um, very important in Taoist practice. But then there's also the whole life cycle, the biological life cycle of how we grow up and, and mature and then decline eventually. And so Taoist, and this is where time starts to flow in one direction. Biotemporality is where our sense of time of past, present and future first arises. And where Taoists have the big, um, the unique perspective of being able or wanting to or knowing how to reverse entropy and becoming younger. And then from there, um, we have two more levels of time left. The next one is no old temporality, which means the cognitive dimension of time, the brain. And this is where past, present, and future come in. And I do have three chapters of this um, in the book, uh, starting with the present and the whole idea of what is the now and what is time perception, um, the whole question of the past, what is memory, how do we create past, and what is the future future as um, sort of mental time travel and imagination and dreams and visualization. And in Taoism, these connect to very specific forms of Taoist practice. So the future connects to visualization techniques, ecstatic excursions to the other world. The past connects to practices such as sitting in oblivion, where you are releasing a lot of past um, patterns and there's also rituals to eliminate patterns of the past and the burdens of the ancestors. And then the present has to do with time perception where Dallas use uh, practices such as mind fasting where they're releasing um, the tensions of the present moment. And then we do have the last and the sixth level of Fraser's system is um, uh, socio-temporality. And again, the book has three chapters on this. Um, there's a philosophical dimension of this where um, the society in their beliefs, in their mythology, in their philosophy decides what exactly is time and how does it work. And so I talk about Taoist philosophy in comparison to Buddhist, Hindu and Western and Japanese and Western thought. Um, and then there's the whole dimension of history where um, you see time in history as flowing in certain directions. And in, in history, we have circular versus linear time, the cyclical kind of time where everything returns, like what Mircea Eliade called the myth of the eternal return, and which is very important in agricultural societies where you have cycle of planting and harvesting and the seasonal patterns. But there's also linear visions and linear visions can be either downward or upward. And downward would mean like the people see a golden age and everything's been getting worse ever since. And there's certain types of Christianity have that. Um, like St. Augustine was thinking that, you know, originally it was all great and, and like the human, human life um, would go into decline after you reach adulthood. So human history is going sort of down the drain. Um, but then the other vision is eschatological where it's like continuous progress. It's an upward movement, uh, which is much more typical in Christianity where we see progress and also Judaism, where we're moving towards this golden age um, of the millennium and where things are getting better and better. And so Taoists have both of these in different variations. Um, and then there's a chapter on time measurement, which is also part of socio-temporality, the whole idea of clocks, calendars, and how, especially since the development of the mechanical clock in the 1300s and the spread of the mechanical clock, our whole society today has been divested and diverted from natural time and how Taoists are really striving to maintain that connection to nature. Um, so the book works in the opposite direction. So we're starting with the socio-temporality and then gradually move all the way back to atemporality. And it has an introductory chapter on language. Language is sort of on the border on the crossroads between socio-temporality and noel temporality. So it's, an, it's a way of shaping the brain. The way we speak shapes our brain and shapes our perception. And there's a lot of research on this where time is really in many places and cultures seen in terms of space, but how culture 
see space impacts how they view time. So in some places, you know, the future is like behind you and the only thing you can see clearly is the past. So it's like you're moving backwards into the future, looking at the past, which for us is extremely strange. So for us, the past is behind us and we're sort of opening into the future. So we look at language to start with, focusing especially on classical Chinese, which is unique, of course, um, in many ways, and also determines the Taoist sense of fluidity, of motion, of dynamics in their perception of time. So I invite you to um, take a look at this book. Um, it's just coming out. Um, it will be available, or it is available now for order, pre-order at a 20% discount on our website, threepintspress.com, and it will ship out within the next week or two. Thank you very much.